All right, we're going to talk about stamina. Now look, guys, we have to figure out what it is that has to have stamina. What is the function that requires stamina? It's as simple as that we can describe it as saying holding your breath all the time. If I do this, no, you'll notice the paper does not move, which means I'm holding my breath the whole time I'm singing, and nothing is coming out except sound. Any air that comes out has to be converted to sound. So there's no excess air coming out, which means I have to hold the rest of it. And then they go, great big breath. And every singer in history that I ever talked to, all the big ones, and even way back Caruso, which mentioned breathing 60 times in his little book, every great singer I ever spoke with talked about exaggerated breathing in one form or another. Uh, someone like Franco Corelli and Jerome Hines did the Mueller Maneuver. They did this. And so forth and so on. You keep doing it, you keep doing it, and you finally do it for, try to do it for minutes at a time. But the, what is it really doing, though? It is exercising the muscles that draw the breath in. And I'm not talking about those muscles. I'm talking about... The muscles way down in my lower back and your flanks go out in the back like this, your ribs expand in the back, and the diaphragm not only goes down this way, but it goes down that way in the back. Now, every exercise that we can do to, to, to I should say every vocalist we can do to exercise those muscles, that means expansion of the ribs, uh, especially the lower ribs in the back, and it means, of course, that the diaphragm will be going down and you will be maintaining that as you keep going, especially if you pull in your abdomen while you do it, which is Caruso and Lily Lehman and a lot of historical singers. You pull in the abdomen while you're doing it. Gally Kirchy said to glue your, your, your abdomen to your spine when you breathe. So the whole idea is that, that because you've eliminated the belly as a place to breathe, you're causing the diaphragm to do this. And the lower half of it moves back like that and makes a space back here as your ribs expand. And over time, you can imagine, especially years, uh, and some things, you know, we spent literally a lifetime breathing like that, uh, as Jerome Hines did. He sang 55 years at the Metropolitan Opera. And he did the Miller Maneuver all the time, which is this one. You're drawing your breath uh, in against a, a half-closed glottis. When I start to sing, I don't let all my breath go. I have to hold it. So I go. And now I can let my breath go. Hello. See? Some singers never let their breath go. They hold it all the time. Some singers are famous for, for if they used a forward pressure on the diaphragm and went, huh, it's called a valsalva maneuver, maneuver, and uh, that's the medical term for it. And Lily Lehman used it for an entire career. And apparently uh, she did this, she and Tetrasini both did this and held it there all the time, which means I go, huh. When I get up in the morning, and then I keep the pressure on my sternum all the time, and I learn to breathe in without relieving that pressure. So I keep the pressure there all the time. Can you imagine the strength that you develop? I've known several singers in, in my uh, lifetime who could imit imitate some of the great singers very well. And I remember several sopranos who could imitate uh, you know, s some of the great sopranos, but they could never imitate uh, Rosa Poncel or uh, Louisa Tetrazzini. They said they were too strong, they couldn't do it, and they couldn't maintain it for more than a few seconds. And these, apparently, these singers did that all day long. So I get up and go, huh, and I hold it there from now and I keep it there. What, what is, pro we, I, I just did a videotape, some of you might have seen it, um, what, what is holding the, 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 the breath against my chest? Uh, the world's greatest baritone in history was Mattia Battistini, king of the baritones, emperor, emperor of baritones, they called him. Uh, and they asked him, how do you sing? And he said, I press my chest. What are you pressing it with? <laughs> Balsalva maneuver, which means the air has to come from behind you and lean up against the front like this. <laughs> Tetrasini said, that's like leaning a ladder against the wall. So I want to develop stamina. 
I have to do these exercises all the time. You don't need to sing a lot because your vocal cords are free and the only exercise they do is this, which is very easy and very natural for them. But when they get longer and sing higher, the glottis gets narrower and the vocal cords actually close tighter and get longer and thinner and the resistance in them uh, increases uh, to sending air through them to make a sound. So we don't, we don't know how much air we send. We send such a minute amount that I can literally use this uh, candle flame, which is the old exercise, or I can use this and it doesn't even move the paper. And ideally it doesn't ever, it never moves the candle flame. So you can do the alphabet, go through the alphabet and go ba 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 sa se si se sa si so si so si da di 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 da di 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 va vi va fo va vi va fo fo right? G G George Jones Jones Jungles of Georgia and all those sounds coming out certainly sufficient to sing in the theater. I've done it hundreds of times. No air is coming out that is not utilized to make sound. So our problem with the stamina, the question is with stamina, how do I develop enough stamina to be able to hold all that breath I'm not using all this time, right? So you breathe in like crazy and then you hold it. No, I can't hold it with my throat. If you hear me holding it up here, it's going to affect my voice like crazy. So some singers are holding the larynx down like this. Hello, how are you today? Hello, That's the way I sang as a bass in college, by controlling my breath, if you want to put it that way, by holding my larynx down. How in the world do you control all this breath and keep it inside your body without holding your larynx down? You breathe, everything's loose. Hear that? By the way, I'm a tenor, you'll notice. <laughs> If I don't hold my breath down, I'm going to hold my larynx down, I'm a tenor. So I go, so how in the world am I keeping all that breath in my body? So that's where you get the things like singing is inhaling. I feel like I'm still inhaling. So when I sing, I only give sound. I'm not going to go, by the way, that'll cause nodules on your vocal cords if you do that long enough. If you do it with force, you can damage your nerve and lose your voice forever. So we learn to never, ever let air pass through the vocal cords unless it's creating sound, which means we only make sounds. We don't make breathy, we won't do breathy sounds. We do sounds that are not breathy. Now, if I go, that one is fine. What if I do this? Well, that has all kinds of problems because I'm pressing, I'm pressing my uh, vocal cords tightly together. And if I do that, uh, I'm, I'm irritating them. I'm making them work in a way they weren't designed to work. And uh, they use, that usually causes, causes tremendous feelings of dryness in the throat when you do that. Uh, the, the, the people that get too much mucus usually get it either as a rea reaction to, to food, drink, uh, sometimes the dryness comes if you drink something like uh, red, like white wine, which has nitrites in it, it dries out your throat and uh, your whole throat gets dry. But for those cases where the vocal cords themselves tend to get dry, that's usually because you're simply closing too much vocal cord, right? So you want to get so nothing but the edges touch. They always they used to say, you know, one molecule kisses another molecule. And that's your voice. And that's why the most important vocalist in the old days was la messa di voce. Uh, the crescendo, decrescendo. So I started with my smallest sound and go, <laughs> then I crescendo. <laughs> and I do a decrescendo. That guarantees, if I can master that one, it guarantees that I will never press my vocal folds, as they call them today. I don't like it. I'm old-fashioned. Uh, I like to say chords. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it shows that, that you're, only, you're only closing the edge, and when you, when you start to crescendo, you're only vibrating the vocal cords. You're not pressing them together and pushing air through them, see? That air pushing through will dry out your vocal cords. And what you want to do is get just the edges working so the rest of them are free and any mucus they produce is normal 
And uh, we don't have to constantly hear singers clearing their throats all the time. That's always a misuse of the breath. In fact, uh, uh, Lampetti wrote that in his book, said all problems in singing have to do with the mismanagement of the breath. Right? And it is true one way or another. It really is. Now, if I do something like uh, breathe uh, the eye formation, like uh, Mr. Lampetti recommends, where you say sty, and I go... Now, I'm going to maintain that throat form and sing through it. See? Now I can do that all day if I don't let the air come gushing up. Uh, you know, the, the, you can either push the air or you can release the air. If I relax, if I push that again, you can hear it. it's cutting off the vibrating function of my vocal folds. See? So the idea is for you to, to do exercises of the type that train those muscles that draw the breath in, and then you develop the stamina in those muscles until you don't ever, ever get tired when you sing. And I must say, I sang some, uh, I say I sang some big roles, very long operas. Uh, Queen of Spades by Tchaikovsky's four and a half hours, and No Carlos four hours by Verdi and Marcel Singer's five and a half hours. You also rehearse all day, so you cannot sing in a way that that makes you tired. Which means you must start now doing everything you can. You you do yoga, you swim endless swimming, uh, long distance swimming. Caruso, Corelli, uh, Kirsten Flagstad, uh, Joan Sutherland, uh, Nellie Melba were all long distance swimmers. Uh, Benny Minogini played saxophone, uh, Martinelli played clarinet, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the, of the other singers, uh, Fritz, uh, Fritz Wunderlich played French horn, Nikolai Yarov played trombone and clarinet, I mean this is, even I played tuba and harmonica, I mean there's this endless list of uh, some kind of activity that exaggerates the, the breathing uh, the, and the, the activity and function of the breathing. And of course, as we're, as we're exercising, we want to breathe efficiently, so we tend to breathe deeper. If you do a lot of long distance swimming, and let's say you do three strokes and then breathe, and one, two, three, and then you breathe, uh, you will automatically breathe in your lower back because your body's all stretched out in the water. Uh, Kirsten Fox that said she learned to breathe by swimming on her back. So, the backstroke makes you breathe way down low in your body. And then uh, all of those wind and brass instruments will, will, uh, will help develop it, and yoga will develop your breathing, especially if you do it for a lifetime. The great thing about yoga, Robin Merrill did yoga two hours a day um, and sang until he was 88. And uh, I mean, I sang with, with Hedger Rosfang, he was a colleague. We sang together in, uh, in the same theaters, and uh, he was still singing at 71 when he died. Uh, you, you, these... Uh, yo he did yoga, Rosfinger did yoga three hours a day, every day, every single day. So the idea is to do all of this, all these exercises that develop the breathing in a very exaggerated manner, right? One of the hardest ones to do, for those of you that are, that are ready for something like this, be careful, but blow all your breath out, <sighs> empty, try to sing to make sure it's empty, and then just let in two drops of air and go, <sighs> Ah. Ah. Three drops of it. Ah. Ah. Four drops of air. To as far as you can. Ten was the great number. Caruso used ten in his famous 40-step uh, walk. Ten steps breathing in, ten steps holding empty, and that means full. I'm sorry, not holding empty, holding full. So you breathe, ten steps, full, and then you hold full, which means you keep breathing in. Then you blow all your breath out over ten steps, 
and you hold empty for 10 steps. Now, to hit that number 10 every time exactly right, you must also learn to regulate your breathing. It's not just amount and capacity. It is constant regulation that you don't end up empty before you get to 10 and that you don't still have air in your body when you get to 10. If I blow out and I'm empty by five, there's no way I can make 10. I'll get too exhausted, but I'll try. <laughs> Let's see, I exhale 10. Now I'm empty. Right? Now I'm old. No! And so forth. This is almost to uh, put you in a little place all by yourself because you maybe can't do what anybody else could do. I will confess that I sang 45 years and 64 roles plus all the big concert music like Verdi, Welcome, and Das Lied Erden and Pendereski's Utrenia Mantra concert works. And I never did get so I could hold 10 steps uh, empty over for an hour and a half. I could do it for an hour. I finally got so I could do eight for an hour and a half. So it's very individual. It is supposed to be an art, folks. We're supposed to be doing what we can do, and that's what we do, but we're not supposed to be able to do what the greatest singer in the world necessarily could do, which was Caruso. Caruso had more breath than anybody that we know of ever, right? And uh, all, all, of the, all of the coaches and people that worked with him who were there uh, listening to him rehearse and he would give voice lessons sometimes to, to, to people and try to help them out. And they all comment that no one had this incredible breath power. He was famous for, for taking a high note, like a high B flat in the theater, holding it forever. And everybody thinks, oh my gosh, and it paints peeling off the walls. It's the greatest high note anybody's ever heard. And then after holding it for a long time, all of a sudden he would start a crescendo and he would crescendo it. See, some people just go mad when he sang. Uh, it wasn't just a fabulous voice he had, which he did have, of course, uh, but it was his ability to use his the, the power of the respiration. He called it the massive power of the respiration required for great singing. What does massive respiration or the power of massive respiration mean to you? See? So... You can do things like, uh, from Helga Roslinga, I learned the chimpanzee to go. You can sing forever like that. See? If you train yourself on both ends to overfill, people say, don't breathe, don't breathe, because they may hear you doing this. If you're controlling with the throat, it's better not to breathe. But I want you to breathe. Let's say I do the, the, the famous uh, diaphragmatic lift of Richard Tucker and Eleanor Steber. And uh, Tucker taught me that the snore breathing exercise would help develop that particular way of breathing the most because it does cause your uh, your abdomen to relax and go in. It causes your ribs to go out, out from way down low and then here and then here and finally your chest expands. So it is probably the best, the best of the breathing uh, exercise. It's the one that Caruso describes in his book. So you you draw, you go... See, my abdomen's going in. I'm not pulling it in. It just goes in because my ribs are expanding and just draws my belly in. And now my ribs start to expand here. First, they expanded way down low in the back. And now they're expanding here in the middle. If I keep going, now they're starting to expand here under my arms. And finally, my chest expands. And it goes like this. And then I've got to hold it and speak to you so you can't tell I'm holding my breath. But believe me, I'm still full and I replace it. 
as I go along. Hello, how are you today? So I'm holding full. I'm not holding pressure here like some singers do, but I am holding full. So any of these exaggerated breathing methods over a period of time, you can play. Now you can see if you play a wind instrument or a brass instrument or you do serious swimming or you do them all and do yoga every day, <clears throat> your breathing is going to develop finally. That, and, and remember, the bigger the drum, the bigger the sound. So if I keep expanding, develop this expansion in my breathing, uh, my voice is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger over the years until finally I can sing dramatic repertoire with no problem. I'm going to sing one way. I'm going to play the drum this loud. That's all. If I want more sound, I have to have a bigger drum. But I'm hitting it the same way. I'm not going to hit my little drum harder and harder and try to get louder and louder with a small drum. <clears throat> I don't want louder and louder. I just want a bigger, fatter tone. And to do that, you need a bigger uh, air bucket with more, more breath capacity. So if I breathe, another one is, so, is an exercise like yoga where they do breath of fire. Now you go. It's a little early in the morning to be doing this. But if I breathe enough and I can get myself expanded and I can do it in a way that you don't hear it in my throat, I'm not holding my breath in my throat at all. I'm holding it down below. <clears throat> so no matter how much you, uh, uh, you breathe, you over-breathe. There's no such thing as over-breathing. There's only holding it in the wrong place. If it gets in your throat, it's a disaster. A lot of coaches... And when they hear you, when they're rehearsing with you, and they hear you uh, starting to do that, they say, wait a minute, wait, don't breathe. Just don't breathe. You're, you know, that, that's not right. You can't breathe like that. It's terrible. And they're right. See, we don't argue. We don't argue. What we learn to do is breathe in a way where you can't hear it in my throat. And if I go a miller maneuver and go, I'm still not going to let you hear it in my throat. Say, I'm full of air, but I'm not going to let you hear it in my voice at all. If I can help it, I'm not going to do it. If I do the snore, I go. No, I'm really stuffed full. I'm like an overpacked suitcase. I'll tell everybody, you got to cram that last sock into your suitcase. And there it is. But I'm still not going to let you hear it in my voice. When I start to sing, my throat is free. <laughs> I'm 83, and I get energy, in spite of being an old geezer, I get energy from all these breathing exercises. I didn't warm up today. I just started doing them and started to see if I can give someone a, a, a better picture of what it's like <laughs> when, the, when, you, you, when you can't, you, your voice has disappeared, you can't find your diaphragm, there's all kinds of things that can happen. So you breathe. If you breathe a certain way, the, uh, in, as we know, any kind of compression causes energy. A diesel engine, for those of you who don't know, simply works on compression. They compress so hard that they create, they create it on so much heat in the cylinder that it ignites the diesel fuel. They don't even have spark plugs in diesel engines, see? So we're sort of like a diesel. Think of yourself as a diesel. You breathe, and if it gets compressed enough and you get really powerful at it, all of a sudden, you have a lot of energy, not just for singing, but for your life. You can do everything. I teach all day. I sing all day, every day. And the only way I can do that is because of breathing. If I do breath of fire, say I feel tired. I don't feel good today. What's the best way to make me, myself feel better? Breath of fire. <laughs> the singing is automatic. Absolutely. And I don't have any stamina problems whatsoever. <clears throat> I may have a little phlegm. We had a little smoke here in the state of Washington. A few forest fires. Everybody started walking around, you know, what the Germans call verschleimt, which means you're covered with schleim in your throat. It's just mucus. So I got to sing through that after performance. I have to get up and sing. What am I going to do? I'm going to breathe. And then maybe I'll add a little breath of fire to activate it. Oh, 
la 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 la. So all these videotapes, I've got 144 of them up or something on YouTube. And the singers that are interested will go through all these. And you'll find this, there's constant references to breathing because that's the way I was taught when I was a young a singer. I remember uh, I was 21 I, and I met Giovanni Martinelli and I asked him about it. He was 77, still singing at the Met, Metropolitan Opera. And uh, all he talked about was breathing. You know, qui respirare, e qui postare. So you say, here, breathe, place it there. And this business of breathing, Richard, I was saying for Richard Tucker, he said, get a good breath under that. Well, how Mr. Tucker said, you know, breathe behind you and sing in front of you. And sing in front of me here, here, sing here, here. So his idea was to breathe and then do a tattoo scene called leaning the ladder. So if I create a big air column, she said, fill it up from the bottom of the top. And then I take that ladder and lean it over against my diaphragm. See, that is a type of Valsalf maneuver. La, but all this breath activity is what gives you stamina, which is what this tape was supposed to intended to be, which was to show you how to not get tired vocally. Remember, if you get tired and you still have to produce air to get your sound, we don't want anybody to hear it breathy, but you still gotta, but gotta use something to sing with, see? And if that breath starts to leak and come up through your vocal cords while you're singing, you you can get hoarse, you can get uh, uh, nodules, you can get uh, ner nerve damage. Uh, all those uh, big uh, uh, doctors, the throat doctors, used to send me everybody when I taught in New York because everybody was getting it. Was always breathing. It's always the problem. Yeah, that's and that's Mr. To quote Mr. Lampard again, all problems in singing have to do with breathing, right? So let's breathe and breathe and breathe and remember, don't let anybody hear that you took a breath. So I'm full right now and you couldn't tell. See? I can also breathe silently so you don't know, you don't know I'm breathing. I, I'll do one of the, the, let's say I do the snore breathing, but in a way you can't hear it. I'm really doing that, but I'm not going to let you hear it. Now I'm full of air, nobody knows it, nobody saw it, I'm sure not going to let anybody hear me breathing, I'm not in the performance, you can do it in private at home, but in a performance you don't let anybody hear me breathing. And this, is, this constant repetition is how you develop your stamina. Okay? Okay. Bye.